Skin in the Game by Nassim Talib. The minority rule indicates that it only takes the presence of a tiny minority that's not more than 3% of the total population, but with strong beliefs and ideas. The minority forces all members of society to pursue their preferences in various aspects of daily life. The United Kingdom is a clear example of this. Muslims in the United Kingdom only make up about 4% of the total population, but 70% of the meat imported into the UK adheres to Islamic slaughter guidelines. Consequently, the majority of the UK population eat meat that's slaughtered according to the Islamic law, although those who can only eat halal meat make up only 4%. This phenomena occurs because the majority of the population is more flexible in their choices than the minority. As non-Muslim residents will usually eat halal meat, but Muslims will never eat non-halal products. So it stands to reason that meat stores prefer to sell halal meat to all consumers. Bit to remember, minority beliefs may influence a large part of majority choices in human societies. In the 5th century, there was a group of monks who didn't belong to any specific monastic order. They roamed Europe begging for food and shelter from the villagers. The church hated these monks because it couldn't control them, as they were very happy with the freedom they live in, despite their bankruptcy. By the same token, in our time, companies seek to curb the freedom of their employees by employing them and connecting them to the corporate culture. Instead of contracting with freelancers or contractors to do the work, companies employ employees on permanent contracts, which allow them to control the freedom of these employees and ensure that they can rely on them. If the employee was obliged to be in his office seven days a week from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m., he will be free to do the work. Unlike a freelancer, who may encounter a better job or offer, and he's free to choose it without any restrictions or obstacles. So why can't employees get rid of companies' restrictions? The truth is that many companies are working on adapting employees and mentally training them to accept these restrictions by connecting them to the company's culture and habits, such as the way they dress and the manner of speaking. Therefore, the company becomes part of their personal identity that they cannot give up. In doing so, these employees have invested a significant amount of their lives towards the organization they work in. Leaving their jobs is considered a big risk, as they will lose a large part of themselves and their identity as well. At IBM, all employees are required to wear white shirts and blue suits. They are also encouraged to socialize with each other out of work. There's even a common sense of humor and jokes between company employees. As a result, IBM employees want to remain obedient to the company. If they leave their work, they will lose their way of dressing, their social life, and many people will not understand their jokes. Bit to remember, companies are taming their permanent employees and deprive them of their freedoms into thinking that leaving their jobs is too risky. There are two types of individual income inequality in any society. The first applies to celebrities, entrepreneurs, and sports stars. The second applies to wealthy bankers and CEOs. When it comes to the first type, society tends to appreciate them and admire their huge wealth. But when society looks at the second type, we find that society resents them and criticizes their wealth. This difference in society's perception is due to the risk factor. Society assumes that entrepreneurs and celebrities have taken a big risk to achieve their fortunes, while it's believed that CEOs and bankers collect their wealth from safe and secure salaries. In other words, society accepts that a big risk leads to big rewards, but it hates if a small risk leads to the same outcome. That concept may explain Donald Trump's popularity. His wealth was seen by the working class voters as an evidence of his entrepreneurial success, and that his bankruptcy at many points in his life 
is nothing but an evidence that he had taken so many risks to reach a life of fame and fortune. Bit to remember, the society's perception of a successful person depends on the amount of risk he takes to reach success. Suppose you have to choose between two surgeons to make an operation for you. The look of the first surgeon is familiar for many surgeons, he has a thin structure and sensitive hands, and he's very clear in his speech and appearance. The second surgeon wears normal clothes, he's fat, and looks more like a butcher than a doctor. Which one will you choose? The writer Nassim Talib says he will choose the second surgeon. Despite his unfamiliar appearance, he certainly had to overcome a lot of negative perceptions in order to succeed in his career. Perhaps he had to overcome many obstacles to prove himself, unlike a surgeon who looks more like a familiar surgeon. The medical profession is one of the professions that require a lot of sacrifices and risks to overcome obstacles and achieve success. So results in it depend on reality and efficiency always stands above appearances. The opposite is found in professions with fewer risks or in which people make fewer sacrifices to succeed. In these professions, results are not based on reality but rather on people's opinions about a person's appearance and success. A perfect example of this profession is CEO. Compared to the doctor and the patients he treats, there are much less risks to the CEO his board, and the investors in his company. If the CEO makes bad decisions, investors' lives are not at stake. He and the company can still prevent mistakes and correct them in the future. In these professions, people may not be interested in assessing the actual efficiency of the employees, but rather they assess their image and appearance. For example, Ronald Reagan, who was an actor in Hollywood and then elected to the U.S. presidency, which is the highest executive office in the United States. Bit to remember, depending on the profession and the nature of the risks fraughted with, success may depend on actual efficiency or appearances. Thanks for watching. Please follow our social media accounts. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.